videos about leaving religion. The purpose of the videos is to get you to think, to use logic, to use reason, and turn your brains on, begin to think and realize that religion is not real. It's not real. So for, for this video, I can't say it will be the only one of its kind. I just kind of wanted to touch on this uh, here. It's so extensive. It's kind of hard for me to say everything in one video and not and not keep the video kind of short. It would have to be like a long teaching video. But I just kind of want to touch on some points about the God of the Bible. Now, as for those that really know, they know that the God of the Bible is actually multiple gods. Those who believe the religion really think it's just one God. Now, I'm not even saying that the God is real, but they, they have edited the Bible so many times and tried to make the narrative so that it appears it's one God, when if you know the background of these things, it's obvious it was more than one God. I mean, from the beginning of the book, it's obvious it was more than one God, and as time went on, they wanted to become go from poly, poly, polytheistic, meaning worship of many gods, to monotheistic, the worship of one God. That's what they attempted to do. But there, there are just too many clues that it was more than one God. If you read the Old Testament, most of the time I speak about the Old Testament because we, the New Testament is coming just like, uh, like Greece too. You had, you know, the, the movie Greece with John Travolta and Olivia Newton John. He had Greece too. We just gonna stay with Greece. We already know the New Testament is total fairy tale with Jesus Christ and all of that. So let's let's stay with the Old Testament here and. and and, and the gods are even named all through the Bible. The only God not named in the Bible is the supposed God of the Bible. Really. Uh, so let's get into it and understand how the names work. Now first let me establish that um, the God of the Old Testament, the original God of the Old Testament, his name was El. E-L. El. Also known by the name Saturn. All right? Saturn. We have the planet named after Saturn, and we even have a day of the week dedicated to Saturn, Saturn's Day, Saturday, which is why your original Sabbath was on Saturn's Day, not Sunday. Saturn's Day, all right? Um, let's keep going. Uh, understand that the Israelites were originally the Canaanites. So they weren't a, they were, they, they switched their name. They, you know, most of them anyway, they, the Israelites came out of the Canaanites. You had a group that wanted to start afresh. So they came up with the name Israelites for whatever reason, right? And, but they have the same language as the Canaanites, the same culture as the Canaanites, the same gods as the Canaanites. And people don't want to don't want to acknowledge this, and and let, let's go and, and realize what we're talking about in the language of English, because most of us don't read um, some of the more ancient languages that the Old Testament might have been translated in. More the the later ones is what you know is English. By this point, stuff has been changed so much, so much agenda has been put into it that it's nothing like the original. Uh, writings, okay? Um, for instance, let, let's just say is Israel. Let's look at let's look at the word Israel. In in uh, Kemet, call the Greek word or the Greeks renamed Kemet Egypt. So if I say Egypt, you know I mean Kemet. They renamed it. Uh, the, the gods there, the goddesses. You had the the, the moon goddess, Isis. You had the sun god, one of the sun gods. There was one for the north, one for the south. One was called Amen, which everybody in church says Amen or Amen. They're acknowledging the sun god, Amen. Either spell A-M-E-N or A-M-U-N. When you look at King Tut's name, Tut Onk Amen. If you look at his father's name, it was Ok and Aten, or Aten, which came, became Amen. This is pretty much the same stuff. But anyway, and the other sun god was Ra. 
So that was the one we're familiar with. We had Ra, the sun god. And of course, El, which we just spoke about, who was Saturn. You take the first letters of each of those names. Isis, you get Is, Ra, El. Is, Ra, El. Israel. That's where you get this from. Because the original God was El. Let us continue. So El was the original God. El was the father God of the Canaanite pantheon. You might say, what's a pantheon? A group of. So he was the father of the group of gods. And he had a wife or a consort, as they call it. Her name was Asherah. And you might see in some of the... Uh, what is it, uh, one of the uh, first and second Samuel or first and second Kings? They talk about tearing down the groves and the high places. Those were places where she was worshipped. So they had to they had to edit her out of the book because you can't have God and and you have a wife. That's two gods. So they kind of edited her out. And plus, if you know anything about the this this Old Testament of Judaism, they kind of just disrespected women because you see what they did with Eve. Right from the jump, they accused her of bringing sin into the world. So, women, you got to be under men and shut the crap up for the rest of this book. For the rest of this religion, the rest of this life in this book, you mean nothing. So, of course, his wife was moved out and the Holy Spirit was moved in to take her place. So, that's why there's no father, mother, child. There's... The Father, Son, Holy Ghost. No, no female aspect in here. Because Asherah, El's wife, was taken out. Now, the most popular of El and Asherah's children are one, Baal. B-A-A-L. Which you've heard about in the Old Testament if you've read it. And you had the prophets of Baal. And uh, the, the famous story with Isaiah and the 700 prophets of Baal. And they had the... He challenged them to a battle, and you know, whose God would accept the sacrifice, and y'all cut y'all bulls in half, put them on the altar, and I cut my bull on the, on the altar, and we'll see whose God accepts the sacrifice, and they sat out there all day, and they their God never accepted the sacrifice, and then uh, Elijah stepped up, and you know, God burned up the sacrifice, and because he poured buckets of water on it, and it said that, that God burned up the sacrifice and sucked up the water and everything. So the prophets of Baal were false. So Baal was demonized in the Bible, even though the original pantheon, Baal was a, a, like a hero and one of the gods that was worshipped by the people. But they had to go monotheistic, so they demonized him. The other one you are familiar with is Yahweh. And some of you are like, what do you mean Yahweh? Yahweh is the creator of all of before all things. No. Yahweh was the child of El and Asherah. He was one of them. But as time went on, they merged El and Yahweh. And in fact, Yahweh kind of took over and became the main god. And they kind of scrapped El. But you can't hide their presence, especially in the English in the Bible. So I have some notes for you and we shall see how originally from from the uh, the their religion how El was the main God and later Yahweh came into play and you can see the play in the words. So let's say El was the main God. Okay? Well, let's look at the words from El. You have you have names like Elijah Elisha, Eli, Elizabeth, El is where you get the word Elohim. Elohim is the plural form of El. El in the Hebrew meant God. Later after they changed it. But the plural of El was Elohim. Which is when you look in Genesis chapter 1, it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But if you look in Strong's Concordance, at the word God, it literally says, in the beginning, Elohim, or many gods, created the heaven and the earth. Now, I'm not saying this is true. I'm just telling you what the book actually says, because when you're reading it in English, you are not getting a true 
uh, meaning of what these things mean because English is a very new language compared to these ancient languages if you're reading it in the Greek or the Hebrew or whatever other language. But just know this, English is a new language. English is considered a Germanic language from Germany. Uh, not from Germany, but based from Germany, Germanic, and because the main uh, uh, languages that compose English are German, French, and Latin. Now later you might have some some influence from Greece in there and, and other cultures or whatever, because English has now become like a gumbo of languages, you know, even to the point now where somebody could say, OMG, that's a word now, TMI, those are words now, even though they're acronyms for things you type on the internet. You know, you didn't have, your, your, your English dictionary grows every year and has since the inception of this language from way back. That's why, you know, you, you didn't have words like internet and online and browser, you know. You couldn't say things like surfing the net. These, these are all new things, you know, that were added on and we're continuing to add new things on and even the words that we have have double meanings. Like Run DMC said on uh, Peter Piper, He's the big bad wolf in your neighborhood, not bad meaning bad, but bad meaning good. So even with the slang that's, that's mixed into our, our language, even words that mean one thing now have double meanings. We got our numbers that even have, some of our numbers are words. One, what, you got one and one. One meaning you didn't lose and one meaning a number. Two, two, two and two. Two meaning also in two. I went to the store, right? Four. You know, I'm down four, whatever. Uh, eight. I was hungry, so I ate. So you got words to even mixed in with the numbers. And even some of the letters might be words. So I is not just a letter. I is also a word, you know. But A is not just a letter. It's also considered a word. So the English language is very tricky. You have to learn it. And, but remember, you're, you're reading the Bible in English and not in the original language. And that's why there's so much confusion because they, they had to invent words to describe things in other languages that you had no words for, which was why there was such a big uh, misconception about the word virgin in uh, Isaiah, what is it? Uh, is it chapter 9 or 7? where it says, Behold, a, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name, you know, and, you know, and but everybody says, oh, that's about Jesus. But the word virgin in English is just virgin. People think about never had sex. But if you look in the strong concordance yet again, you'll see there was an instance where there was only one virgin that did not mean without sex because they would say, she was a young woman and was a virgin. Right, which means she didn't have sex. But if they said she's a virgin, that means a maiden, it was a woman, and didn't mean she wasn't without sex because the woman that had sex to bear the son was Isaiah's wife who had the child, which it was a sign for the king, King Ahaz, of the time. It had nothing to do with Jesus. It was, so Matthew was a total lie as I've said in another video. But according, but like I said, when you look at the language, you'll understand the words have more meanings and Christians use that when they're trying to prove their point on something, then they want to go into breaking down the languages, okay? So let's bring it back, bring it back. You had L. L is the main God. And so L, uh, I, I, I gave you the names, Elohim. And Elohim meant multiple gods. You also had words that came along later, especially seen in the New Testament, with El. You had elect. You had elite, elder. And even words in our time, which mean power, El, electricity. So El was the uh, prefix of these words. That's where you got your El. And in some other cases, El became the back end, the suffix of the word. For instance, the angel, Mike L, Gabriel, 
right? Joel, the prophet, Noel, Israel, Daniel, even the word angel, which some have said, and I can't prove it, but some have said, where you get the word Angus, meaning beef. Angus, get the ang, and you use the L, and you have the bull god. Because if you don't believe that, you can look it up. And the bull god was also associated with L. He was called a bull god. Not just him, but Apis, when you got uh, Serapis, uh, which was a mixture of Osiris and Apis uh, from, uh, what's his name? Ptolemy the first Soter, where you actually got Jesus. It's just a mixture of words they use. Apis was a bull god. Yahweh was a bull god. That's why when Moses came down from the mountain, they made the golden calf. They made a bull. That was the age of Taurus, but was going to the age of the ram. So Moses wanted to get rid of the calf. Let's continue. Uh, he was supposedly born in Bethel. Bethel. His name shall be called Emmanuel. The prophet Ezekiel, the one that taught Paul, Gamaliel, uh, the, the son of Abraham, Ishmael, right? Jezrael, Nathaniel, the prophet Samuel, all of these in, in L. And remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Israel. And so ironic, he had two wives who were his cousins, actually. And he was tricked into marrying the one wife who was the older sister of his of his uncle. Can't remember his name right now, right off. I probably might post it, we'll see. But but he was four, he was he married Leah. Her name ended in A-H. Lee uh. Ah, yeah. But the one he was in love with was called Rachel. Ra C H L. Again, Ra. Same letters of his name, except missing the Isis, but hers was Ra. The CH could have a meaning, I don't know. And then the L. That was the one he was in love with. And he had Benjamin and Joseph. Well, let me say it in order. Joseph and then Benjamin by her, and she died in childbirth having Benjamin. And we know Joseph became the second ruler under Pharaoh in Egypt when they all moved to Egypt. And that's how the whole Moses thing started. So the, the so when, when they started merging things, they began to turn Yahweh into one of the premier gods. They started to merge El and Yahweh and to make them into one god. So you have the Yah. But let's also, don't, don't forget, I'm looking at, because of the English language, Asherah, who was El's wife. Asherah, and then you had Yahweh. So a lot of words had the Ah from Yahweh, but I'm looking at some of them had the Ra from Asherah. It's especially speaking, Abraham and his wife, Sarah. Now remember, he was Abram and became Abraham, and she was Sarai, called Sarah. But those have the R-A-H directly in them, but there's still the A-H in there as well. Other words that had the A-H in them. And you'll see them, uh, they're, they're names in the Bible, names of books in the Bible. Most people ain't read them anyway, but Micah. Of course, y'all know about Jonah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Obadiah, Zephaniah, and Zechariah, all in with the Ah. So they, they have the Yah on the end of them. Now, if we look in the Bible of one instance where we can especially see there were two gods. I mean, well, more than one god, and so let's say two gods was, even when he said, let us make man in our image and let them have, you know, dominion over everything, right? Let us, and people say, oh, you're talking about the Trinity. You got to remember when this stuff was written, there was no such thing as that, that Trinity of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, because there was no Son at this point. And the Holy Spirit was not a major figure, especially not if you were given the book of Genesis and you read this, no Jesus is mentioned or no son ever to come forth is ever mentioned anywhere. And the Holy Spirit, all that stuff is just not there. So this is like you're, you're, you're dating. Your religion has progressed way up to here, so now you're going to change things to make it something here. The same way the Bible says that Eve was deceived by the serpent, and then Paul in the New Testament reaffirmed that saying that 
Eve was deceived by the serpent, but somewhere, you know, centuries later, they wrote the book of Revelation, and they said that that old great serpent, Satan. And now people reach back and say, oh, well, that serpent in the garden, that was, that was Satan. The book never said that. That's a tradition, something you're saying, but never connected Satan to that serpent in the garden anywhere, ever. Never. Okay? We're just looking at the words. Let's just look at the words. So, we, so they wanted to start moving uh, Yahweh in to make him God. So, all right, so let us make man in our image, the Tower of Babel. They also say, God says, let us go down and see, you know, what they are building. But if you knew everything, why you got to go down anyway? But it's, it's the same thing as if you had uh, the, pantheon, the Greek pantheon with Zeus being the father God with Hera as his wife. And he birthed, you know, uh, Mercury and Athena and Mars and... Or should I say Aries, and I'm confusing the Greek and the, and the Roman names. It's all the same. And, the, you know, Hercules and um, what's the boy name from uh, Clash of the Titans, all of them. You know, the Zeus fathered a lot of gods. Same way El and Asherah fathered 70 gods as well. Some are more known and some are not. And especially in this time, you don't know about them. But that's where it all started from. So let's even go to another spot in the Bible where um, it clearly tells you there's more than one God. So in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 8 and 9, let's look what it says. It says, first one, it's going to speak about El in chapter 8, and then speak about Yahweh in chapter 9. I should have said this before. Let's see if I can edit it, whatever, I don't know. Um, it says, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Now, if we focus on verse 9, it says the Lord's in all caps. Lord's in all caps in the Old Testament always means Yahweh. If you don't believe me, check it out for yourself in the Strong's Concordance in uh, 3068. 3068, it says it's uh, Yahovah. Yeah, Yahovah, which is also Yahweh. And even when, they, when, they, when the Germans first translated stuff and they had the J in there, they, the, J, the J did not mean J. The J meant uh, Y. It had a Y sound. No different than how you could say today, you know, Jose is spelled with, not with a H, but with a J. The J has an H sound. But the J there, with, with them, the J had a Y sound. But somewhere, somebody, they, they changed and said Jehovah. There was no Jehovah. It was Yahovah. Yeah, but that all comes from, comes from the, the, the tetragram, yod He vav He. Uh, the God's name was yod He. It was the four letters of the Hebrew alphabet. yod He vav He, which was, you know, Y-H-W-H. And they added in the consonants and made it Yahweh. How it was actually pronounced, nobody knew. It doesn't really matter because it's not like it's real. But that's how that was. So, let me bring it back. Come on, B. Come on, B. I'm trying to do this. I don't know how I'm doing this. It's not rehearsed. Uh... We talked about Jacob's name, which Jacob was changed into Israel. And uh, the Most High divided the waters, his portions, Jacob. Notice it said he, it says that Yahweh's portion was Jacob. And uh, like I said again, anyway, you see L, capital L-O-R-D, that's, that's Yahweh, or Yehovah, Yahweh. But he was given Jacob. He didn't say, he even say, not to disrespect him or not to confuse it, it didn't say he was given Israel. He was given Jacob. That was that was his original name was Jacob, but Jacob was name was turned into Israel after he had a fight with after he had a fight with God. He wrestled with God all night, and then God had to touch his hip and cripple him so that he could leave. Remember, God is actually the sun, and it said they fought all night. It was morning time. The sun got to come up, 
So he's like, I got to go. Let me go. And he said, no, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And he touched the sinew of his hip. And it crippled him or whatever. And he said, your name shall now be called Israel, which means wrestles with God. And Jacob said, I have seen God face to face. And he named that place uh, Pineal. I might be saying it wrong according to the, to, the, to the pronunciation, but the pineal was the same thing in your head, the pineal gland, which is also that third eye you see in Egyptian or Kemet uh, pictures or whatever. That's where all of this comes from. So that's what they were all, they were telling you this, the, the story is not the story that's told, the story is the story that's behind the story, if you, if you actually go and look and search. So we, have, we saw where the Most High in, in Deuteronomy, the Most High divided up everything. And he, gave, he, had seven, he had 70 children, not all sons, but he, he divided up the land and he gave Jacob or Israel to Yahweh. It just said that right there in the Bible. They edited it in a way so you don't see these things, but this is what was going on. It was... They began to get, try to get rid of the different gods and demonize other gods so they make it look like they was only worshiping one god the whole time. El and Yahweh were not the same gods. How is his name Israel, but his name is Yahweh? It doesn't make sense. This is what I wanted to say. Let's go back to Genesis. There are two stories in Genesis. Let, let it be clear for those who don't know. I'm going to go ahead and tell you now. Check it out for yourself. The Old Testament is uh, pretty much derived from four different sources. And then scholars have said this. The four sources are J, E, P, and D. J were the sources that uh, dealt with the name Yahweh or Jehovah. They, they called him Yahweh or, as some say now, Jehovah. We know they said it back then. The E source were those that dealt with God that called him God which in the Hebrew was El, L aka Saturn, but El, right? Uh, the P source is the ones who were the priests. They dealt with the priestly things, and they have the greatest source in the Older Testament because a lot of things dealt with the priests. And, you know, of course, priests, let's go back to pastors, and the pastors want to control everything. So they wrote things to their persuasion where the priests were the most important. That's why you'll see that type of source. They deal with all the priestly things and whatever. And then the last source was only found in one book, pretty much, was the, the Deuteronomist. They wrote Deuteronomy. So Deuteronomy, if you look, you have the Ten Commandments in Exodus. The Ten Commandments reiterated again in Deuteronomy, but there's a slight difference there. But those are the four sources that wrote the Old Testament. They each had an agenda, J, E, P, and D. So the Yahwehs, the Elohims, the priests, and the Deuteronomists. Check it out for yourself. You don't have to believe me. Okay? So that's why you have two creation stories in, in the Bible. You have from Genesis 1-1 to Genesis 2-3 is the first creation story written by the E-source calling God, God, the whole book. And then you look at Genesis chapter 2 verse 4. It starts out and it calls him Lord God. Elohim. Right? No, you don't know. Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh God, Yah, Yahweh Elohim. Notice two different stories. In the first story, you got Adam wasn't created until the sixth day. But in the two fourths, the second story, Adam's created first and then comes the animals. See, in this one, it's just the, the, the animals and the trees, everything else, the sun, the moon. Adam comes at the end. And this one, Adam is here. Then it makes all the animals and he got to name them. And this one, he made male and female. And this one, he made Adam. And he couldn't find no mate for him. So he said it's not good for man to be all one or alone. And so he pulled the rib out and made him. They're two separate stories by two separate sources. People are like, oh, it's re reiterating the first one. No, it's not. It's two different stories. There are two different stories for Noah when you read it. In one story, Noah had to take the animals two by two. In another one, he took them two by two, but take seven of every clean animal. There, there are doublets all through the Bible in the Old Testament. Two different stories told. That's why I got... First and Second Chronicles, First and Second Kings, telling the same stories, but it's different. In one instance, David numbered the people. He shouldn't have numbered the people. In another one, it says Satan told uh, David to number the people. 
same story, but you gotta you actually gotta read all this stuff to see it. You can't just have faith on this. You gotta read it and see it for yourself to see where the contradictions and everything lies. Whew. I don't know how long I've been talking on this video, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop. There's a lot to edit. When I send it back, I don't know everything I said. I'm just talking. I hope I gave y'all enough right now. But remember that Israel. And, and it's the irony of the Israel. Isis is uh, Isis is the moon goddess. The day of the moon is Monday. Ra is the sun god. The sun Sunday. Because, you know, they worshiped the sun back then. Uh, especially the Romans. Uh, what's his name? Constantine. And that implemented this stuff, switched it from Saturday to Sunday, and, it's, and then the L is Saturday. So it's like you're saying Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Saturn's Day. And if you look at the other days of the week, you'll see these things as well. That Tuesday is named after the god Mars, the god of war, Mars or Aries. And, and Yahweh is actually the same thing. He's the same version. He's a, he's a god of war. There's another version of it. Uh, what is it? Uh, Wednesday is Odin's day, Thor's father. Uh, Thursday is for Thor. Friday is for Freya, his mother. Then, of course, you got the weekend again. Saturday, which is Saturn's day. Sunday, which is about the sun. And Moon Day, Monday. So I'm going to just end this video right here. That's enough right here. I, I could add more. I'll do another video later. I, I just, it's just so much. I don't know them, but where, how to contain it all. So anyway, y'all, you know, like and subscribe to the channel, share with other people. And I was there, of course, tell them William Jones, Leave a Religion, that's the channel. And y'all take out the, I want to say thanks for y'all support out there. Okay, and I'm out of here. Y'all take care. Peace.